hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video, we're going to cover how to connect to popular API services like the ones you see here using a custom Zappysys API driver for ODBC compliant apps for things like Excel, Power BI, Informatica, or even languages like C Sharp, Python, and more. The list of available API sources to use with this driver is always growing, so don't worry if you don't see your particular API provider listed at the moment, because it might be added in the future. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the universal JSON, XML, and CSV drivers, which can connect to virtually any API source in just a few steps. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing to do is to download the Zappysys ODBC Power Pack, which you can get directly from the Zappysys website hovering over products, ODBC power pack, and download the free trial. And don't worry, I'll add a link for that in the description below. I've already installed it on my machine, so I'm just gonna search for the ODBC configuration tool. And here we go. You may already know this, but just in case you don't, always pay special attention to whether you're on the user DSN tab or the system DSN tab. The user DSN or data source names are connections that are only available to the user that I'm logged in as whenever I'm on the machine. Whereas the system DSN tab is going to be connections that any user can use while logged in on this system. And that's especially handy because other service accounts might be running as other users that aren't me and they would want to have access to this connection. So that's the one I'm going to use and I'm going to click add. I'm going to pick the Zappysys API driver and click finish. And now we see the wizard. So if you're familiar with creating ODBC connections, you'll notice this wizard looks a little bit different and that's because it's the custom Zappysys component. The first thing to notice are four options. The first option is the easiest and the best. You just select your API source from the dropdown and the wizard will walk you through the remaining configuration for that API source. This is the option I'm going to use for the demo. But suppose you didn't see your connector in that list. You can search online if you'd like, or you can specify a direct file path for a custom connector, or you could enter some direct XML for a custom connector. Like I said, I'm going to pick the first option and I'm going to just use OData. Oh, one more thing you might notice is this simple view and this advanced view. You could use this option if you'd like. I'm just gonna stick with the simple view. So I'm gonna click continue. And again, sticking with an easy example, I'm just gonna use the no authentication option. But depending on your connector, you might need to select a different option. So always, always, always refer to your specific API documentation for your specific connection settings. But some connectors might have additional help for things like that. So OData doesn't, but let's say I picked Google Sheets. Google Sheets has this little link over here that says steps to continue. And if I click that, up pops a little bit of help. So that's cool. Just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna hop back over to OData. And I'm just sticking with this basic API URL that's already provided. I'm gonna click test connection. And there we go, it works, I'm connected. One other thing to check out is this copy settings feature. I'm gonna click that. This is handy if you ever wanna copy the connector settings to your clipboard. So let's say you need to copy the connection string to another app. This is really handy and now it's on my clipboard if I ever needed it. Similarly, you might notice a load settings button up here in the top right. Okay, so my connection works, I have a connector, but what data am I getting? That's why we need to check out the preview pane. So I'm gonna hop over to that. This is where we can see all of the tables or endpoints available for that API URL I'm using. So I'm gonna just pick the customer's table. And notice just like that, it generates me some SQL for this customer table. So I'm gonna click preview data and there we go, this is the data from the customer's table from that API source that we've connected. But we don't have to just stick with this particular stuff. We can say, comment out the name, we can give the ID and alias, 
and let's say preview. So just like that, now we see we're changing the data that's retrieved from this API. But it doesn't have to be that uh, simple. You know, you can add in some other tables and do some joins. You could do more complex things. If you need a little help building the query, you can use this query builder tool. If you're not sure of what specific syntax to use, you can check out this examples tab. So let's say you want to use a bulk update feature. Here's some sample SQL syntax you can use for that. Or you can search for functions, like let's say I want to do a min aggregate, but you're not sure. That's really helpful. Or let's say you want to do something much more complex than a SQL statement that's one single statement. You want to write a stored procedure. You can add one of those as well. So it's very flexible, very easy, and there we have it. Now we have a custom ODBC connection to an API source using the Zappy Sys component. If you want to give it a try but haven't already downloaded the Power Pack already, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget the link is in the description below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Zappy Sys YouTube channel to get more updates and SSIS tips and tricks like this in the future.